What's up guys? So I took Forest again, the same place I took in Orlando and two years ago and again it was like this close. Like maybe it wasn't as close as I thought to be honest after reviewing videos. But so fourth place sucks especially when you're like literally so close to top three and I thought I was gonna get top three. So my matches after reviewing them my first match, there was 15 guys in my class. My first match was with the guy that ended up taking fifth. I took fourth. Um, boom, we went in the hook. He felt strong. I was like, uh-oh, like, it, it's close. Like, I had slight position, but, like, it was it was really close. And then uh, I went for the pin, and he elbow fouled. He probably should have not elbow fouled. He like I think he did it on purpose to start over. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna go high. Cause I felt like I don't have to worry about my hand. And maybe I can roll him. Or at least do like a high hook. And I, I basically did a high hook. Like he, he stopped me in the hook. But it was too late and he was already pinned basically. He felt strong and he took fifth, so like I'd say I kind of got a good job, but I did, play, I did pull the fifth place guy first, so that's not like the best first match, but like it wasn't hard, it wasn't very hard. And and then I pulled Japan, and I hooked him. I was told to hook him. I think hooking him was the right idea, but he was really strong. I was disappointed to lose to him because he took second in Masters two days ago to Devin Bear. Devin Bear beat him easily in the Masters. So I thought, okay, if Devin could beat him easily, I should be able to beat him. Not necessarily easily, but I should, anyone Devin could beat easy, I feel like I should be able to beat, especially if they had just pulled two days ago. But um, he felt really strong and he beat me. And then I pulled a guy from Malaysia who was not close to me at all. And then I pulled the guy that ended up taking fifth again, and I beat him easily. Like. I knew what to do. He wasn't good enough to beat me. He wasn't gonna beat me. And then I pulled Japan again, but so, Japan had just had a long match with Devin and lost, or beat Devin, barely. So I'm like, okay, I should be able to beat him now. And I thought about trying to roll him, but he, he stopped my top roll really quick. I also went to straps with him, which was a bad idea in hindsight, but, uh, I tried to roll him and he stopped my top real quick and started to pull me over and I elbow fouled on purpose, a professional elbow foul and got a restart. And the second time I jammed him in the hook, but he got me close to the pad. And I held him and I held him for five to 10 seconds. And then he came back up close to the center. And I'm like, okay, he just had the war with Devin. He pulled masters two days ago. He's tired. Now I'm gonna bring him back. And I hit and his arm didn't move and then he hit and he got me really close to the pad and my arm was stretched out and I held him and I held him. And I, I wish they wouldn't have called the pin. Like I'm sure I was down, but it was really close. And Rick picked me and said, he just got you. Like just, your wrist just barely dipped below. Like I felt like he had a really, really good endurance, but I felt like I would have beat him in the long game if I could have just held on. In hindsight, it might not have worked, but when he came back to center, instead of like dragging and hitting to the pin, I should have, slid my elbow forward and really jammed in and uh maybe it would have worked maybe it wouldn't have um main draw main draw arm wrestling so um a lot of people don't like main draw arm wrestling they like super match format because there's no like luck of the draw i think my draw was pretty good i think uh well obviously depending on the draw i could have been lower or higher in the placement depending on who I pulled in what order but I'll say the guy that um so Japan took third he lost to the Chinese guy and he lost to Aku Aku's like literally slammed everybody I'll, I'll say more about that in a few minutes but um so the draw so I watched the whole class over again already and the Chinese guy who's in the top two who beat Japan to get back to the top two I'm not saying I could beat you I'm not saying I could beat the Chinese guy, like, honestly, I'd like to try because Styles make matches. Obviously, I want to try everybody. He'd be the strong favorite over me, but I guarantee if I had his draw, he had a really good draw, I guarantee I would have been top three. Because even if I was in his shoes and lost to Japan in the end, 
I would have been third, and then Japan would have been top two. Um, but also, I will say that Devin Bear was probably minimum third best, maybe second best, if he was fresh, because he beat Japan easily two days ago. Japan just recovered more from Masters. Devin was sore today. He's had some aches and pains. So even though I was fourth and seniors, undoubtedly Devin is still better than me. He deserves, like ranking-wise, there's no question. Like, I'm not taking his rank, even though I placed above him, and beat a guy that he lost to, because he smoked Japan two days ago, and I lost twice to Japan. So anyone wondering about that, um, Devin was minimum third best, in my opinion, fresh. And uh, Aku, he he smoked everyone. Like it wasn't even close at all. Like he hasn't won yet. He's in the top two, but but like he looks insane. And anyone that says the level of IFA is weaker than uh, Waff, well, that's not a debate. Like it is, but the way Aku looks, and he's moving up in weight now. He says after this year. To 86 kilos this is 78 but yeah I guess if he's moving up maybe not but um, he needs to pull someone like it might not happen but he needs to pull someone like Mendagas because I guarantee I would put money a lot of money up that even if Mendagas beats him it's gonna be close like Aku needs to pull a top five guy maybe top seven Top five to top, definitely a top ten guy. Like Aku's probably close to or around top ten in the world, in my opinion, for sure. At this weight, I think I'd love to see him pull Mendagas or Kristaps Bluminus, maybe Yanis. I think he would beat Yanis left, but that might be close. I know Yanis doesn't really pull left that that often. Like he doesn't really care about it, but I'd like to see uh, Aku pull like um, like a Kristaps or a Mendagas. Obviously, he wouldn't have anything for like Prokopchik or a Mill. But uh, or Alan Zolo, those guys are way, way above. Like, like he could, but like I don't like obviously that that should he shouldn't. Like, it'd be a huge, huge, huge surprise if he did. But I'd love to see him pull a top guy, like a five to seven rank guy on the left. Team USA. I'm sorry, this video is going long, but Team USA. Alex Cartwright in the supers has slammed everybody. Like, he's probably gonna win the whole thing in supers. Last, this is just left today. Alex Topperell is undefeated with the Canadian guy in the 210 class, 95 kilos. He looks unstoppable. He easily beat the guys that beat Eli um, Brohard, and, and Eli is really strong, like really strong. Like Alex looks insane. Um, and again, like how the draw works, like Tim Lewis took ninth, but he lost to the first and fourth place guy, so he could have been the fifth best guy. Might not have been, but possibly, potentially could have been. Um, he went two and two. Eli beat the third place guy, but then later lost to the third place guy and the second place guy and got fourth. And then Santino took fourth in the 57 kilos, the 125 weight class. So me, Santino, and Eli all took fourth in our classes. Um, Devin Baird did finish sixth. Um, he lost to a guy I beat, but again, he would he would have beat that guy if he had, had not pulled Masters, no question about it, 100%. And, uh, S.C. Aaron is undefeated. Um, Beth Saltzman took third. Um, sorry if I forget anybody. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Big Eshen is from uh, Iran, I think, or Iraq, I think Iran, who you might have seen at the King of the Table event. He lost to a guy that Alex Cartwright easily beat. So that's pretty crazy. And this dude's huge. Like, obviously size doesn't mean everything, but... Oh, and then 86 kilos, this was actually really surprising to me. So Brian Fry is in the top two, but he's B-side. He lost to Mason Drossi from Canada. And and I thought, I was like, oh, Brian's gonna literally slam the piss out of Mason. Like, I thought it wouldn't even be close at all. And Mason beat him. Super surprising, super, super surprising. Even if it was fresh for fresh, but on top of that, Mason pulled the youth category two days ago. Had a really hard match in the youth and took second to Greece in the, Greece in the youth. So I'm like, fresh, I think Brian would slam him. And now Mason, he's got to be sore, even though he's young. And he didn't even win the youth. So that's crazy to me. But other than that, it seems like Brian has slammed everyone that I've seen. Maybe he can come back and win, but still for Mason to even do him once after pulling youth and having wars is insane to me. 
so tomorrow we got right but to be honest to be honest if my right's not that good but like i don't know if this is the case but without any doubt in my mind 1000 percent if all the guys in my class are equal right and left i guarantee i can beat some of them on the right guarantee maybe even like half of them to be honest but um they might be better right and depending on the drop you never know i could go home too like i usually do right-handed at these tournaments but i think with the right draw with a good draw i think i can get like two wins with a good draw one win with the with the okay draw and then uh realistically like the chances of me getting top four right-handed are like one percent probably so top three like a half a percent or less and and top one with the right would be like 0.02 percent 